School is back in session and learning feels incredibly exciting when it's fresh and new. As that refreshing energy begins to wane, you may notice that there are gaps in your knowledge that aren't being filled in the classroom. Your teachers are leaving things out either intentionally or unknowingly. Which is worse is debatable, but the truth of the matter is more vital. There are things that you need to know that your art teachers won't tell you. So let's fill in the blanks. Your art teachers come armed with a mountain of tutorials. Whether you wanna know how to draw an arm or a flower, they'll give you a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial. You simply have to ask for it. The thing is, you don't need another tutorial. There are hundreds of different ways to draw an arm. You've probably seen a few of them and you're probably gonna learn a few more in the classroom. What you haven't been taught is how to learn that information, how to freely use it by yourself and wield it in any way that you want. Now, teaching you how to study would take a much longer article and would totally diverge from this, but I can tell you one thing that will help you learn things a little bit better. A simple and effective way to learn something efficiently is through testing. You can't really do a multiple choice quiz with your art skills, but there are ways that you can test your knowledge. For example, you could do a portrait study from reference, and then the next day, take away that reference and see how much you remember. If you find it easy to remember the information, try that same portrait from a different angle or vantage point. Challenge yourself and see how flexible you can be with the knowledge that you've gained. Anything you struggle with can always be reviewed. Through testing, you quickly learn where the gaps in your knowledge are and you can rapidly improve your skills. Teachers love to dish out homework. And if you spent the whole summer playing video games, going outside with your friends, those are the habits that you're used to and it's gonna be very hard to get back into progressing your skills, even if that's what you really wanna do. You may want to do the drawing homework, but your brain is used to you coming home and jumping on your favorite game. When you jump into your usual habits, your brain doesn't really have to think much. It gets to preserve energy. It's gonna do everything in its power to get you to play your favorite game and stop you from thinking about drawing. Your brain's gonna make you afraid of drawing. It's gonna make you procrastinate. Anything it can do so that you don't exert any extra extra energy. If you start small and create a habit, you can bypass this need for your brain to nudge yourself towards unhealthy behaviors. Draw for the shortest amount of time where your brain finally says, I can do this. For me, when I had to start from scratch, it was 15 minutes, but for you, it could be one. Your teachers probably won't wait for you to catch up with your homework, which puts you at a disadvantage but it does stop you from having burnout in the future. So it makes sense to make efforts towards healthy habits now instead of later. Do yourself a favor and ignore this advice. You don't need to start as a traditional artist if you wanna be a digital artist. I personally still like using a pen and pencil, but I really dislike the toxicity and uncleanliness of paint. I'm very thankful that companies like Wacom exist because they make it possible for us to become artists without spending thousands of dollars on paint or having to breathe in toxic chemicals. And studios are similarly grateful because now they have teams of digital artists that just need computers. No mess. <laughs> the sooner you get used to using a drawing tablet, the more comfortable you're going to become with it. It literally doesn't matter if you start traditional or digital. So if you have no desire to hold a pen or a pencil and you just want to go straight to using a Wacom tablet, do it. You can always jump back to a pencil if you want to try it in the future. Those skills will still translate. As artists, we've had to defend drawing from reference so much that I think we forgot that we have to draw from imagination too. Or maybe some of us just really didn't know. If you want to build a strong visual library, drawing from reference is critical, but so is drawing from imagination. If you never drew from reference, how would you know what anything looked like? And yet if all you do is draw from reference, you've never really had to think for yourself. You just copy. You've relied on the reference so heavily that now you can't be without it and that just creates a different problem. 
Drawing from imagination is what gives you the ability to think for yourself. You learn to problem solve when you have to draw things in ways that you don't expect. If the arm moves up like this, you're gonna see certain muscles. If you draw a head from this angle, you're gonna see the cheekbone just a little bit off to the side. You'll run into a good deal of failure and be quite uncomfortable for a while. If you can give yourself time to be comfortable being uncomfortable, you will gain skills that make most people jealous. <laughs> when you're given a project from your teacher, most students follow the rules. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> but in most classes that I've been in where someone comes up with the most extraordinary results is when they've only followed about 1% of the prompt. The prompt may be Atlantis, but this student will take only 1% of that idea and create something really remarkable rather than an underwater city with a bunch of fish-like humanoids they create a city in the sky and it's bursting with lush forests the only comparison you can really make is that it's also a hidden city the idea really is just not to be afraid to do your own thing your teachers want you to learn and create something unique if you go off into your own direction and it's still something beautiful it helped you learn and it really leveled up your skills Nothing but praise should be coming out of your teacher's mouth. And if there is, that's their problem, not yours. 99% of the time that you spend creating is the process. And yet none of my teachers ever told me how to really enjoy it. Even the best ones that I had. <laughs> how do you keep a healthy process that you can enjoy throughout your entire career? The implication really is that learning to enjoy the process is up to you. It makes sense from an outsider's perspective, right? If you like doing something, you do it. If you like drawing, you draw. If you like painting, you paint. It doesn't always translate well when you're a beginner and you know that you're about to create lots of failed pieces and works that just aren't up to the standard of what your mind is seeing. <laughs> At least not yet. How do you enjoy the process when nothing you create is really good enough? It's frustrating. You need to develop a healthy relationship with your art in order to enjoy the process. Have a growth mindset. Know that failure is going to be a part of this journey and it's okay. The right mindset is what's going to set you apart from having a thriving creative environment to someone who is burnt out a lot of the time. Most of the time, my creative process looks a little like this. I'm excited to draw. Okay, I have the basic shapes. It's looking good. This looks like shit. What happened? Why do I suck so much? I should just give up. This is terrible. I hate this. Huh. It doesn't look so bad now. Hey, that looks pretty good. I'm proud of myself. Most artists who struggle with anxiety in their process usually stop when they hit the point where everything looks terrible. They want to quit. You see the drawing or painting that you're creating going really poorly and you just don't see the point in continuing such a terrible drawing. Not knowing that there is a wealth of information to be learned through the failure, through the anxiety. This happens to all of us and you are not alone. It's your brain's fight or flight response that's engaged because of the uncertainty of what's gonna happen to the piece you're creating. Get comfortable being uncomfortable and you will push past this every time. I had a friend who once tried to tell me in a not so subtle way that the anime styled work that I was creating wasn't good, that I should change it if I hope to ever be hired in the industry. Unfortunately, there are teachers that think this way too. <laughs> anime is fire. There's no question that it has become one of the most popular forms of media. It's on our streaming services. It's amazing. <laughs> May have taken a little time for it to gain traction in the West, but it's here. And if you create anime-styled artwork that's beautiful, you're gonna find people interested no matter where you are. I should also note that if you enjoy drawing in an anime style, you shouldn't change it just because you might get more opportunities. You wouldn't want them anyways. You wanna do things that you're passionate about, not conform to something that doesn't interest you in the slightest. Failure is going to happen to you. There is no avoiding it. 
If you're not failing, you're not learning anything new, and you have to challenge yourself if you want to become a great artist. Failure isn't a dreadful event that is something to avoid. It's something that you should embrace as part of learning. You can use it to fuel your growth. Use it as a tool to measure your understanding of what you're trying to learn. We learn best when we challenge ourselves moderately. If you challenge yourself too hard, the frustration of failure is too much. So you can check yourself based on how much you've failed in a piece. If you're trying to learn the portrait and you can't even get the basic shapes right, maybe you have to lower the difficulty so you can deal with the structure of the head. If you draw the head perfectly, you probably need to increase the difficulty. Try things from different angles, try different structures of the head, receding chins, different types of noses and lips. How much you fail will show you how much you've learned and what you still need to work on. I was very lucky in my first year of art school where my teacher's assistant for my figure drawing class told me to go to a trade school in California. Classes there cost a fraction of the price I was paying to go to this full-time art school, and the teachers were even better. They were deeply rooted in the industry. It was one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got during my art career, and it really changed my life. Art school is outrageously expensive, and it's only gotten worse over time. There is a case to be made for going to an art school, but if you have the opportunity to go to a focused trade school, or take courses online, you should do it. You won't be drowning in debt by the time you're ready to graduate and find a job. Rather than paying back a very substantial student loan, you can go and spend your money on other things like games, or maybe paying your parents back by sending them on a trip to Italy because you're a pain in the butt as a teenager. Part of the art journey is learning to trust the process. But there's also nothing wrong with challenging your teachers. The internet is a growing source of information on the subject, and it's likely that your teacher can learn a lot from you. If you're excited to learn more about art and you do your own research, you might find more videos like this, where you can learn a bit more about how to enhance your art education. It's up to you to get the most out of it. It can only help point you in the right direction. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you to Wacom for sponsoring this video. Have a happy and healthy creative process.